Welcome back to Epic Airsoft HD. This week we have the APS UAR. This stands for Alp Urban Assault Rifle. Uh, it's of course kind of built up design and if you watched our unboxing of this uh, you would have seen a quick preview of that. Uh, you can click up there if you missed the unboxing. Right, let's have a look at some of the features of this specific gun. Uh, we'll start from the back here. Uh, this is where it kind of gets interesting already. Uh, this gun itself has got the APS kind of skull logo on the back there. And of course this butt plate does come off. Now this isn't where the battery is housed. Interestingly enough, uh, it's very similar to ICS, L85 and other kind of bulk up guns in design where you can actually use a hex key to take the spring guide out and you can quick change the spring. Of course this gun, if you saw the unboxing, actually comes with a quick change spring. In fact, we'll put a picture in picture there of it actually changing the spring over. So it's a really neat design. Uh, if you're playing on field in CQB, some of the fields maybe run 400 feet per second uh, and you can't use 400 FPS gun on a CQB field, uh, you can just change it down for an M100 or an M190 spring and bring the FPS of this gun straight down. Of course we'll be doing a chrono test later on so you can stay tuned for that as well as the shooting range test. Uh, focusing on the back here as well, we also have uh, an ambidextrous design as your uh, lever here. When you lock that back, you push the top here. As famously we saw uh, Bob from Airsoft GI do the, the kind of chin hit on it. Uh, we'll put a link up there so you can check that out. Kind of funny moment. Uh, so I'll show you how you can change this over. Just squeeze down on this little button and your cocking lever comes straight off of the gun. Now it's fairly simple and straightforward from there. You take this whole top end off and you can just pop out this little section. I'll just let go of the gun for a second. This little piece of plastic, keep a hold of it because you can change it from one side to the other and you can actually change where, I guess if this gun was real, where the shells would come out. So I'm changing it over to a right hand setup, of course, because I'm right handed. Once that's on there, just give it a good hit down. And of course you can put your lever back in again, lock it into place. So now it's much more user friendly for a right hander. So it's a nice cheek weld on the gun. Uh, actually much nicer than some other bullpup gu guns uh, that we've reviewed before, such as the L85 and the g and F2000 that we did not so long ago. So feels comfortable to kind of shoulder. The battery for this gun is actually housed underneath the 20 millimeter res reel. So I'll go ahead and take that little compartment out. So this, you just squeeze on either side and you can pull it out from the top. It's not that actually that hard to get off. Uh, the battery connector is just here and also you've got your fuse in there. If your fuse blows, it's gonna be very difficult to get out. You'll need to take the gun apart to do so. So we'll just put this, this is a 7.4 volt uh, stick, lipo stick battery. Um, I had a bit of trouble with this before just getting it in there because there's a lot of wiring, excess wiring in there and it does tend to get in the way a little bit. I don't want to burst my battery obviously because it's a, a lipo. I think you would really struggle to get just a standard stick down there. But uh, yeah, it, once again I'm just emphasizing how careful that I'm being getting this battery in because you can cause all sorts of trouble with something as tight as that. So there we go. I managed to tuck it sort of away. So there we have it. Once we've got it in now, you have to make sure that your LiPo connector doesn't pop out the top. Hook up your battery. Try and tuck the wires down there. And once you've got the wires in then, <laughs> you have to try and get your the lid back on it, which is also a little bit of a struggle. I guess you could have figured out a slightly better battery camp compartment than this, but um, with the kind of ergonomic design that they went for, I guess they were kind of limited in keeping the gun at that kind of decent size without going too big to accommodate a battery. So that's it in there, nice and secure. Uh, the wire, some of the wires tend to get exposed and it's a little bit fiddly to get in there, but once it's in, it's in there nice and secure. Uh, along the top here, you have a 20 millimeter res reel. It'll take most attachments. Uh, I've got some here. I'm gonna use this uh, red dot that we've used before. It's actually not a dot, it's a chevron. This is a Trigicon Tri-Power. It's really nice uh, red dot and it looks kind of cool on top of this as well. So you get an idea. This gun doesn't come with iron sights. So if you've got iron sights from a gun that fit a 20 millimeter res reel or some sort of red dot or optic, uh, you're gonna need it on top of there because you think the res has got a kind of gap or a groove through the middle, but you can't quite get your eye down there. It's 
especially if you're wearing face protection, uh, this kind of raised up section of it isn't quite high enough just to kind of get a look down the site. So uh, definitely recommend getting an optic if you're considering getting this gun. So on the sides here, in the front right, uh, left and on the bottom, you've also got a reservoir there. I've got a flashlight as well, we can probably put on here too. Uh, I would recommend some sort of foregrip on this as well. I think it'd look pretty cool. It kind of balance out the front with the back here. So you've got a whole lot of nothing on this side. You could probably get a like, kind of shotty grenade launcher or something as well if you were kind of trying to trick this out. But I'll put a wee flashlight on here and you can get an idea of the kind of thing that you can do with this gun. If I can get it on, that is. It's an awkward job. So once we've got this on here, I'll go on to some of the magazine features. I've got a few magazines here. I've got VFC, Mag brand, uh, Echo One, a JG Mag, and of course, uh, the magazines that I use in most of my M4s, which is the E-Mags. So it's fairly important that this gun does take M4 magazines because a lot of people who will be going out and investing money in this gun will already have that kind of thing, like myself as well. So you get a nice sure fire on there. Uh, nice and low profile on it, so let's check out the mags. For the magazine release, you've got left and right hand side, and you also have this one down here as well, so if you push it in towards the gun, it'll release the magazine. If you push the button on the right hand side, it'll release the magazine, and of course you can push it on the left hand side. Now there's a cool little feature on this, it's actually spring loaded, so when I push this button, it pops the magazine out, so if you're looking for a quick reload, or you brush against your gear, your magazine's gonna pop out, it's gonna hit the ground, so uh, just to bear that a little bit in mind. So Emacs, that one fits in there nice and tight, which is good to know. Uh, this one is a VFC brand. Give it a hit as well. No, uh, definitely not VFC mags. This one is a, this is a JG high cap. So let's try and fit this in here. So that works pretty well as well. As far as I know, all high caps work because it's a little bit on the top here that actually causes the trouble. Uh, and this one is the Mag brand, which I think isn't gonna wrangle its way in. No, definitely not. That's much worse than the DFC one. So uh, if you're looking for kind of magazines to get, I think these E-Mag ones look pretty much the coolest in there. Uh, that's what I'll probably be running with this gun when I'm running about with it on the field. So the fire selector. Uh, it's actually kind of back to front. Safe is pull down with your thumb. It's really hard to access with one hand, so if you're pushing up with this thumb, you're actually better rolling your thumb around this side to kind of get the fire selector working. So semi-automatics all the way down. Midway, you've got fully automatic, or actually you've got one head or three heads or no heads. Uh, that's, I, I don't know what APS has done with that. It's maybe their skull logo thing, who knows. But uh, the trigger pull is something that I really want to point out. So. When we've got it on fully automatic or semi-automatic, the trigger pull has a very, very long bite point. And we've already had a battery in this. The bite point is somewhere round about the end. So you kind of guesswork to where BBs are actually going to come out of your gun. Of course, when we're doing the shooting test, I'll point that out. So uh, we're going to move on now to the chronograph test and we'll take it out on the field and see how accurate it is compared to the other bullpups that we've done before. Okay, we're out here on the 30 meter range test. Uh, for this test, we're using 0.25 gram BBs and we're using the magazine that came with the gun. We've had the barrel a good clean out, so uh, it's about time we put some rounds down range. All right, to start off with, we're going to use semi-automatic. We're going to fire between 10 and 12 rounds down, down the range. All right, let's line ourselves up and fire a few rounds. Okay, let's move on to fully automatic. All right, we've got a fresh new target up there and now we're moving on to fully automatic. I'm just gonna keep firing uh, about three bursts in full automatic, so let's see what it can do. All right, nice steady rate of fire. Seems okay. Let's have a look at the targets. Okay, I said we were gonna look at the test that we just done, but I'm actually gonna run another one. The original magazine that came with the gun wasn't quite feeding the BBs quick enough for the rate of fire. That's generally to do with the magazine, nothing to do with the gun. So I'm going to use this uh, JG high cap instead and see if we can get a better result. What's happening is the BBs not quite fed into the hop unit. Uh, actually when the piston fires air through the nozzle and into the hop up chamber, 
the BB bounces about inside and then it gets caught with the, the hop-up rubber it comes out of the barrel. And that's how you heard that kind of spitting noise. It's uh, really bad for the accuracy. So I'm going to try this magazine now. Okay, let's compare that target to the other fully automatic one. Okay, let's have a look at the fully automatic test first. This was the first one where the BBs weren't feeding so good. Actually, we had a nice little cluster there and the few odd flyers were probably the ones that were getting caught in the hob unit. I moved on to another magazine that was more consistent, but not quite as accurate. There's not a nice, neat cluster like is on that one, but uh, these one or two flyers out this side, the rest of them are sort of consistent. So the mag issue is not that bad, to be honest with you. Then we have the semi-automatic test that we did first, which is just absolutely ridiculously good. Uh, that tiny little group in there is what we did. One flyer just missed the target to the left, but that could be due to the BBs rather than the gun itself. What's happening here is there may be a little bit of inner barrel wobble when we fire on fully automatic, it's shaking about. When we're consistent on semi-automatic, it's getting time to settle and put a nice grouping in there. That's actually fantastic. For a gun that costs around about the $200 mark, uh, you cannot complain with that. So if you want to use this as a DMR sort of rifle, I know it's quite short, but it is a bulb up. Uh, this would be a great uh, gun to use. I've also had this out in Section 8. It performs really good in terms of range. For the little niggles that we have, kind of ergonomic wise, the fire selector being kind of far away from the thumb uh, and the battery compartment, uh, we can completely forgive it for that. $200 for a gun that can shoot almost a, a, it's about a 50 millimeter grouping. That's absolutely fantastic at 30 meters using 0.25s. Be impressed to see what it can do with these. Anyway, guys, if you want to see this gun, uh, put a little thanks out there to Jag Precision for sending us this so we could do a review of it. Uh, you can check them out on Facebook, on their own webpage as well, and of course we'll put the links to it directly so you can buy this gun should you wish to do so. Uh, again, thanks to Brian from Echo One. You can check him out as well in the links in the description below. He's also got a tech channel. Uh, I'll also put up a couple other links to other reviews of this. It's always good to see you know, different outside point of views of the gun itself. So guys, check out uh, our last week's episode unboxing and of course, uh, some of the other bullpups there that we've done before. We'll see you next week. Thank you.